anytime an uh, incident such as this involves a child, uh, it's very tough. Up next today, we're learning more about a family shooting in Brookhaven, what deputies think happened moments before the deadly attack. Plus, Jackson Police investigating why this officer stormed into a dollar store with an assault rifle. The chief says he wasn't even supposed to have that gun on duty. And happening now, a massive tropical cyclone powering through the Pacific Ocean. A look at the island it hit overnight. 16 WAPT News starts now. The one to watch. This is 16 WAPT News at 8. Good morning on this Saturday. It's March 14th, and thanks for waking up with us this morning. We'll get to your headlines in just a second. First, though, we want to take a live look outside on our Capitol Tower sky cam. We could finally start to dry out a little bit today. Let's check in with meteorologist Adam McWilliams. For weather first. That's right, Allie. I don't think any rain in the forecast for today, with the exception of North Mississippi. They could see a few showers. I think the Jackson metro area, we stay dry for today. Outside now to the uh, weather maps, and you can see uh, this is a live look from our Capitol Tower Sky Cam. You can see the Capitol building there in the distance. There was a little bit of fog around this morning. I think that will break, but we'll stay mostly cloudy for the majority of the day. There could be a few sunny peaks out there, and that would only warm our temperatures up even further. Right now, we're 61 degrees of southwest wind at about 7 miles per hour. Temperatures around the area pretty much in the upper 50s to lower 60s. And we're reporting cloudy skies everywhere. 59 in Natchez, 59 in Macomb, 61 in Vicksburg, and 60 up in the Greenville area. What's left of the rain showers now pulling north of our area, and we're left with a lot of cloud cover around. But there are a few breaks across portions of Louisiana that could make their way in here during the day today, and that would help to uh, boost our temperatures. We're expecting high temperatures despite the cloud cover to remain near 70 degrees. As we head towards tonight, those clouds stick around, temperatures back into the 60s. And then as we head over the uh, next couple of days, looking like it's going to be a pretty dry start to your uh, weekend and for next week, but more rains in the forecast. We'll have details coming up in a little bit. Thanks, Adam. New this morning, a possible shooting at a nightclub in Jackson. Police responded to Club Zodiac on South Gallatin Street just after 4 this morning to reports of a shooting. Our crews did catch paramedics taking care of one person in an ambulance. We are working to get more information. We'll keep you posted on that throughout the morning. Well, Jackson police say they also responded to a restaurant shooting. It happened at Big John's Restaurant on Megar Evers Boulevard just after 10 last night. No one was injured in that. A high-speed chase that began in Louisiana came to a crashing end in Jackson overnight. Troopers say Quimenta Epps stole a pickup hauling a boat behind it from a McDonald's parking lot. They say Epps flipped the truck in Jackson near 220 and 20. The truck, it landed on top of the boat it was hauling. Epps was in the hospital this morning with serious injuries. He is facing several charges. Well, we're learning what police think happened in the moments before a man opened fire on a family of five, killing a father and daughter in their Brookhaven home yesterday. I spoke to the neighbor who called the police. This is the house on South First Street in Brookhaven where police say Jimmy Lyons shot five people. The suspect was somehow renting a room from Mr. Jermaine Sims in his family. It was a mess. Uh, from Jimmy's statement, uh, there was an altercation and uh, uh, that uh, um, led to the gun and uh, he ended up with the gun and he fired the gun. Upon the first officers arriving on scene, it was discovered that the victim actually suffered from gunshot wounds and there was more than one. She had her children with her. I also found two more victims at the residence along with a suspect. 31-year-old Jermaine Sims and his 9-year-old daughter, Jemiah, died from their injuries. And when things like this happen, uh, it hurts me. One neighbor tells us three children started banging on her door, begging for help. You can see where it was leaving. He had blood all over him, you know. The girl had blood on her, you know. And uh, but the, the other little girl in the yard, she says, says, she said, I'm not hurt me now. I don't know the family. I don't know who they are. I don't know how many kids lives down there. But we had three kids at our house last night. Chief Bobby Bell says the shooting has the entire town shaken. Anytime we have a, a situation here in, in our city, it, it, hits, it hits home with me because we know everybody. We we'll pray for both families. Mm -hmm. That's all we can do. Anytime an uh, incident such as this involves a child, uh, it's very tough. Uh, it weighs on you emotionally. 
weighs on me physically. Well, here's what we know right now. Police say that Jimmy Lyons shot members of the Sims family on the on First Street in Brookhaven early Friday morning. The father, Jermaine Sims, and his nine-year-old daughter, Jemiah Sims, both died from their injuries. Two other children and their mother are in the hospital this morning. Lyons is in jail, charged with murder. He is expected to go before a judge for his initial appearance on Thursday. Well, this weekend, law enforcement, friends, and family will pay their respects to a deputy U.S. marshal killed in the line of duty. A memorial for Josie Wells is set for Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. at Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church on Robinson Road. No video photos will be allowed. Another memorial service will take place Monday in Jackson County, where Wells grew up. The founder of an ambulance company that operates in Brandon charged with raping a 12-year-old boy. Arkansas deputies arrested James Pafford on Monday. State police launched the investigation after getting a tip about sexual abuse. 71-year-old founded Pafford EMS but is no longer with the company. Pafford is out of jail on a $250,000 bond. The ambulance company started providing services in Brandon in February, replacing AMR. We're now to a 16 WAPT exclusive fallout after our cameras caught a JPD officer run into a crowded parking lot with an AR-15 assault rifle. As 16 WAPT's Ross Adams reports, JPD says that officer wasn't even supposed to have that gun. Frightened customers ran for cover Thursday when one JPD officer burst into this dollar store with an AR-15 assault rifle. The police just came through the doors telling us to get out. The officers responded to a disturbance call. Chief Vance says they're not even supposed to have guns like that. They are not to be used by these officers. Vance told us assault rifles are only supposed to be issued to SWAT team members. We've started an internal investigation into where this officer got this weapon and why he had it on duty. Thursday night after the officer ran into the Dollar Tree with the assault rifle, the patrolman raced across the street with the rifle trained on a parked car in the gas station. The man inside terrified. Yeah, they came with guns, you know what I'm saying? This is an AR-15 rifle. It runs about 800 bucks, and it's similar to the one the JPD officer had at the dollar store. A veteran law enforcement officer tells us this is a tool every policeman should have in their arsenal. Because first line of defense is your patrolman. They're going to run across stuff before a SWAT team can ever get there, and they, they need these kind of weapons to protect themselves. It's not necessarily problematic that they had the weapons in their possessions. They may own them, but they cannot use those weapons while they are on duty for us. Brad Harbor has spent years as a police officer and deputy in Madison County. He says JPD should consider changing their assault weapons policy. If you owned your own and you were trained in it, we offered a training program for all the officers. You could carry your own patrol rifle for your protection. We're trying to build the best police department in the country here. Anybody who has a badge and wears a gun that belongs to us must abide by that. In Jackson, Ross Adams, 16 WAPT News. That officer is still on duty. The chief said he could be disciplined for violating policy. Well, happening right now, a deadly cyclone is tearing through Pacific Islands. Tropical cyclone Pam left a trail of destruction on an island chain near Australia. Officials confirmed six deaths, but believe there are dozens of others. The Australian Red Cross says the destruction is unbelievable and warns humanitarian needs will be enormous. This morning, the storm is weakening as it moves towards New Zealand. In Ferguson, Missouri this morning, a massive manhunt underway for a gunman who shot two police officers. It happened late Wednesday night after a protest outside the police station, hours after the police chief announced he was resigning. Authorities searched at home in connection with the investigation on Thursday. Please appreciate the fact that we have a situation where many leads come into us. There were several leads that came into us regarding that specific house. We were able to uh, investigate that. I don't feel like at this point that's going to lead us anywhere regarding this investigation. A much calmer scene in Ferguson the last couple of nights. The protest began after the police shooting last August that killed Michael Brown. Now, yesterday, the mayor announced he has no plans to resign. A few road warnings to tell you about this morning. Part of I-55 South that will be closed this morning. And MDOT has shut down the left lane between Elton Road and Byram Act for construction work. They plan to reopen the lane later this afternoon. 
Also today, part of I-20 West will be closed. Crews have shut down one westbound lane between Robinson Road and Spring Ridge Road. That lane will be closed from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. both today and tomorrow. And Worrell Road will be closed for the next couple of days while crews repair a water line. Hines County officials tell us it will be back open around 3 o'clock on Monday. 10 after 8 is our time now. Let's check back in with Adam McWilliams for an update on our forecast. All right, a time to dry for today. We're talking about uh, dry conditions for this weekend. That's going to allow the uh, ground to dry up a little bit. The ground is soaked waterlogged from all the rain we had this week. And here's a live look at Storm Chill 16 Doppler radar. You can see we are looking good this morning. No rain showers expected for today. Over now to the weather maps. Here's a look at your forecast for today. A lot of cloud cover. There could be a few peaks of sunshine. And they'll help to warm our temperatures up to near 74 tonight. Temperatures fall back into the middle 50s. Fog will be developing later on tonight, so that could be an issue first thing Sunday morning. But there is more rain in the seven-day forecast, and we'll show that to you here in just a minute. Happening today, turkey hunting season gets underway. Wildlife officials say there aren't going to be as many full-grown birds around this year. State regulations require any turkey taken by an adult to have a beard at least six inches long. That requirement does not apply to hunters 15 and younger. Mississippi spring turkey season runs through May 1st. So to come, the sentencing for the man who jumped the fence at the White House. And happening today, a huge home show in the Metro. We'll tell you where you can check out hundreds of vendors. It is 8-11 right now, and you are watching 16 WAPC News.